Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're going to wait just a few more seconds here, and uh, I see a lot of people joining in. So we'll wait a few seconds to get started. Uh, hope you're enjoying your day so far, and um, I'm glad you tuned in. That's a it's a good first step. Good first step is to see uh, some things that can change your life. So that's what we're going to do today. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is Bruce Ford, and I am a agency vice president with your family bank and First Financial Education Centers Midwest. Um, we're located out of Indianapolis, Indiana. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of our programs called Your Family uh, Bank and the Seven Steps of Money Management. It's one of the things that we do here, we're proud to do here. And the reason for that is, is that we found that this program is changing lives, saving marriages, and really giving people hope across the, the entire United States. Debt in our country is killing marriages. Uh, the average couple on a daily basis, or excuse me, on a weekly basis is, is arguing about money at least two times. And I firsthand can tell you that, that that's not any fun. And uh, a lot of divorces could probably be avoided if it weren't for financial ruin. And the interesting thing about it is, is that it's all about education. It's all about being educated in regards to something we don't already know. So what I'm going to ask you today is just to sit back and relax. I'm going to get this done in less than a half hour. And I'm going to walk you through a program that can really change your family's life. And what we like to do is we like to show people how to get out of debt without spending any more money than they're spending now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an average couple. I'm going to show you some average debt and I'm going to show you some average retirement opportunities that they're currently um, participating in. And then I'm going to show you how we got them out of debt in less than nine years, including their mortgage, student loans without spending more money. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to take off now. Um, so what we like to ask people is two questions. Are you 100% sure you're going to have a great retirement or do you have some doubt? Well, naturally, most people have some doubt. And when I learned this system, when this was brought to me, I had been in the financial planning arena for seven years nearly at the time and uh, really thought I had a good handle on retirement planning. But when that question was asked, of me, I thought, well, yeah, I have some doubt too. And then the next thing was, what if I could show you how to get out of debt in nine years or less, including your mortgage without spending any additional money than you're spending now? And I'm going, okay, all right, you've got my interest. Because if you can show me how to get out of debt uh, in nine years or less uh, without spending more money than I'm spending now, I want to know because, you know, just like many people, immediately we think, well, wait a minute, I've got a mortgage that's got 25 years left on it. So how do we do it? So here's the deal. The average American household today has about $250,000 worth of debt. Now that's going up on a consistent basis because student loans and the cost of tuition has risen so high that it's creating a huge burden for those once they graduate from college. But the deal is, is that every dollar that comes into the household today, and this is straight from the U.S. Census Bureau, out of the dollar that comes into the household, 40 cents of every dollar is going out in taxes. Now, that's not just payroll taxes, okay? That's taxes on taxes, that's taxes on gas, that's taxes on buying uh, uh, things, cars, whatever it is. The average is 40 cents of every dollar. The other culprit uh, that's destroying the dollar when we get it into the household is interest. That's not an interest rate of 34%. It's the fact that 34 cents of every dollar goes out to someone else in interest. And that's allowing for 23% for lifestyle and 3% for savings. If you think about it, we're living pretty good in America today on 23 cents of every dollar that comes into the household. And the reason is, it's, it's interest. We've borrowed the money and leveraged someone else's money to acquire a home, a car, or we're using credit cards and such. And what we're saying is that your family bank approach can certainly reduce the amount of interest that you're paying. And moreover, once you complete the program, can eliminate the interest you're paying. Which if we reduce taxes by using some of the tax laws that I'm going to talk about today, and we also reduce the interest, we can increase our lifestyle by 33% and our savings by 15%. So what we're going to walk through is the seven steps. And step number one is knowledge. I'm going to give you some knowledge today. Knowledge becomes power only when we put it to use. So if you're not taking notes, if you're not sitting there uh, interested and in paying attention, the knowledge I'm going to give you is not going to work specifically if you don't understand it and you don't put it to use. You know, we, we kind of look at our situation uh, of money management uh, like the game of life. 
You know, in the game of life, you may or may not go to college. Uh, you may or may not get credit card debt when you're in college and student loan debt. You may come out uh, and buy a car or wardrobe and charge some things. And you may take family vacations. You may buy and sell real estate. And oftentimes, sometimes we repeat the debt cycle over and over. But ultimately, we want to have a great life. And a great life includes a great retirement. So how do we get there? Because eventually, life will be over right? So money plays a big, big, big role in our quality of life. A few more things just to let you know here. The average American household, by the way, is bringing in $2 million of income into that household and are arriving at age 65 with only $60,000 in retirement assets. Okay, that's not the American dream. That's not the way we picture our life. And the reason for that is we're only saving 3%. And a lot of people aren't even saving 3% today because of the debt load because of the fact that 34 cents of everything that comes in is going out to debt. You know, and then taxes. We don't pay attention to taxes the way we should. And a lot of that has to do with education. We just assume that we're out here working and that we're paying payroll taxes. Let me tell you, every time you go to the b, &B you pay taxes on license plates. There's a tire tax for crying out loud. Um, there's, there's taxes on buying goods and selling goods. Um, and ultimately, we have to have money for our living expenses. And so we adjust that according to the amount of debt and taxes that we're paying out versus our income. But the bottom line is who wants to work for 40 or 50 years and end up at age 65 with $60,000 in total assets? It's not the American dream. And a lot of people will say to me, well, Bruce, I'm going to have my house paid off. Well, let me tell you, I do this on a regular basis and I see clients every day of the week. And there are many, 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 many 65 year olds with 15 and 20 year mortgages. And a lot of reasons for that happens to be that they refinance those homes due to maybe medical costs. They refinance those homes and taking money out for college. But the end result is, is that that asset that we thought was going to be there for retirement still has debt on it. So what if we could teach you how to reduce the volume of interest you're paying to lenders? What if we can teach you how to get out of debt in nine years or less? What if we can increase your income? Did you know decreasing your debt in increases your income? Think about it. Decrease your taxes, save for college and retire, uh, retire with a tax favored income. Uh, when I get to the portion of this presentation, I show you the amount of taxes that come out of a retirement portfolio. Uh, it's probably going to be a, a rude awakening for a lot of people. So what's step number two? Step number two is cash flow. Cash flow is king, everybody. When you track your money, you control your money. That's something you need to understand. Tracking your money, you control it. Now, this program is not a program that says you can't have your Starbucks, go eat a bunch of rice and beans, go sell all of your stuff and pay down your debt. This program is just simply becoming real with ourselves, real with our spouses and setting down and saying, what are we spending? What have we been spending? What are we currently spending? And what are we going to spend in the future? So that you can actually see together what's going on. You know, a lot of families have one person who manages the checkbook. Did you know that the person in the household that manages the checkbook dies an average of two years earlier than they should? There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of stress that comes into play with that. And you know, if we're not tracking our money, how do we know where it's going? So once we track our money and we see that uh, uh, we got emergency and emotional purchases that are going to happen. Because if you track your money, you're going to see, oh man, we had to buy tires last month. Or, oh man, we took a weekend away. We need to get away from the kids. So we took a weekend away. That's an emergency and emotional purchase. And what happens is most people, when that happens, they either charge it or they take it out of their savings, thus reducing the amount of money they're going to have in the long term. So here's what I'm saying to you. If you're going to plan for long term, you need to plan based off an 80-20 rule. 80% of that money to be there in the long term and 20% of it to be used for emergency and emotional purchases. How do banks work? I'm going to talk a little bit about how banks work because at the end of this, by showing you how to get out of debt in nine years or less, including your mortgage, I'm going to show you how to create your own banking concept. So what I want to do is I want to talk about banks and banks are a business. There's nothing wrong with the bank, but I want to show you how they work. You put a dollar into the bank. The bank may give you a 1% return on that. But what does the bank do with your money? Well, a lot of banks are allowed to lend out 10 times that dollar. So for every dollar you put in there, they're allowed to lend out 10 times that amount. And when they do that, they lend it to people with variable interest rates. In other words, it may be 5% on a car note, 12% on a credit card, 3% uh, on a mortgage. But they take and they use your dollar that you're getting 1%. And let's say that they get 6%. So they lend out your dollar for 6%. 
So that means they pay you one, they keep five. Do you realize that that's a 500% return to them by using your dollar? And so the only reason why I want to tell you this is because they're taking your dollar, turning it in, in dollars. And by the way, by doing that, you're getting a 45% return in most cases. So would you rather be the person who deposits the money in the bank or would you rather be the bank? And the answer to that is obvious. I'd rather be the bank. So, so how do I do that, Bruce? Well, we're going to get to that. Step number three, debt. Minimize debt to create additional wealth. Well, think about it. If you're in retirement, and you're living off a portfolio of about $500,000, you can probably safely pull out $2,100 a month and maybe not run out of money, assuming that the market doesn't crash. But you've got to get up to $500,000 for that to happen. Well, if you take that same person that, that, that needed that $2,000 for debt and they didn't have debt, would it not be true to say you just reached a situation where, where you – you're generating that $2,000 without the $500,000 retirement assets. So think about the additional wealth when you minimize debt. Freeing up cash flow is not only king, but it makes it possible for us to live better. So let's, again, let's go back and talk about this typical American family, Mark and Joyce, who, who are one of our clients. And Mark and Joyce are 37 and 35. They've got three kids, three, four, and eight. They want to retire at 65. They're making right around $8,000 a month, and they want to retire with an income of around $5,000 a month. That's pretty typical because most people think that they only need $5,000 because they think that uh, the, the uh, house will – uh, be paid off. But with that being said, that's their goal. They currently don't have any college savings. That's very important because they have a three, four, and eight-year-old. Uh, they want to, in their, their areas of interest were reducing debt, get spending under control, increase savings, college planning, and then wills and trusts. And let me tell you something about wills and trusts real quick. A lot of people misunderstand this. If you have a will, a will guarantees that you have probate. It just simply tells the judge what to do with your assets. But if you have a trust, you can actually keep your assets out of the public arena, avoid probate, and have your wishes honored after you pass in a more efficient manner um, and a very more cost-effective manner. But back to the will thing. You know, if you have children, and I use this example all the time because I've seen this happen. If you have children and, you know, maybe the husband, John, tells his brother, Steve, hey, Steve, if I die, I want you to take care of my kids. And then maybe the wife, Linda, tells her sister, uh, uh, Missy, that, hey, Missy, when, when we die, if something happens to us, I want you to have the kids. But they don't tell each other that they told their siblings this. And then they die in a car accident without a will or a trust. Do you not think that that brother-in-law and that sister-in-law are going to be uh, fighting over those children? They're going to be in a situation where you know, they're grieving the loss of, of their sibling. And at the same time, they, they want to honor their wishes and take care of those children. And, you know, I've seen families divided because people simply didn't write down what their true wishes were. And so I encourage you not to do that to your family, to simply have that conversation because the deal is, is that we're not, uh, we're not invincible. We are all going to meet our creator one day. And I think I would be better served to know, uh, at least for my kids to know exactly what my wishes were for them. So. Mark and Joyce were concerned about that and uh, and some other things. So let's look at savings, and this is typical too. They have a they have a six thousand dollar emergency fund, not a bad deal. They're making 0.25 down at the local Bank of America. Um, they have a Fidelity account 401k where they're putting three hundred dollars a month into it, and there's thirty six thousand and some change in there. And that's you know a Visa twelve percent, four hundred sixty balance, fifty five dollar payment, furniture eighteen percent. Uh, interest rate, uh, $59.88 left on it, $237 payment, auto, and then a mortgage, 6.5%, $152, almost $53,000, and the payment's $972. So their average interest is 10%. They've got $179,352 in debt, and they're spending away from themselves $2,177 a month. Now, let me ask you something. When I say how much debt do they have, and they say $179,000, is that really true? Is that really the amount of debt they have? Well, no, it's not. Because the deal is they have 29 and a half years left on this debt because the mortgage won't be paid off for 29 and a half years. So when you take all the debt and then all the interest that's going to be paid in regards to that debt, their total debt is $374,000. Guys, just take a look at this. This is what Americans have been doing for years. For years, $179,000 of debt has $195,000 worth of interest going to someone else. 
this is definitely not the American dream. And by the way, they were going to retire at 65, 66 in this case, and they'll be out of debt. But let's look at what happens with the retirement plan without your family bank. Right now, they have 36500 in current retirement savings. They're putting in $300 a month uh, in the contributions, and they're getting 5% on their money. If they're in a 25% tax bracket, which I'll tell you is going to is pretty low considering retirement right now, but we don't know if interest rates are going to go up or down or, or stay the same. But if they are in a 25% tax bracket, they will have accumulated 409,000 before taxes at the end of 30 years, which is important because they'll be out of debt in 29.5. And then after taxes, that will be $307,000. You know, I had somebody in the office today tell me that they didn't know that when they got to their 401k and their IRA in retirement, that the money they took out, they'd have to pay taxes on. Well, that's true. And if these tax rates go up, that 306,000 could be a lot lower. Let's to look at what can happen with Mark and Joyce um, when they accomplish the Your Family Bank model. What we did was we taught them how to snowball their debt, okay? And I'm sure you heard of snowballing debt. It's where you line up your debt, and when you pay off the debt, if it was $50 a month, you add it to the payment of another debt. So if you got a debt that's $50 a month and a debt that's $100 a month, when the $50 a month debt is gone, you start paying $150 to the next debt. And you roll that down all the way to the very end in regards to the snowballing. Now, Mark and Joyce were able to find $300 a month that they could actually use to capitalize or fast start this debt program. So it only took them, with that $300 extra a month and then the snowball process here, it only took them 7.9 years to get out of debt. Now think about that, 7.9 years instead of 29 and a half. That saves them $117,000 in interest. That frees up $21.77 a month for retirement. That's money that you can turn back to yourself and save for retirement instead of paying lenders. And that savings after 29 and a half years equals $1.1 million almost. Look at the difference here. The current plan is 29 and a half years to get out of debt. Our plan is to get out of debt in 7.9. We're going to save $117,000 in interest and we're going to create over a million dollars of tax favored retirement. So, Stay on the current plan, pay this debt for 29 and a half years, end up with 306, get out of debt, turn the money back to yourself, and at the end of 30 years, you're going to have $1.1 million. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but right about now, most of the people I show this to go, okay, I want to see my numbers. And we run those reports for you. I'll tell you at the end of this how, how you can reach out to me so that I can get that. Uh, to you. Uh, matter of fact, there may even be a banner at the bottom of this webinar right now that you can click to support or to submit your information. But the deal is we don't need personal uh, num or, uh, numbers like bank account numbers and all that. What we do need is your simple information in regards to your revenue and, and, and or your actual debt. And I will provide this report to you at no cost show you what the your family bank program can do for you try to help you find a little bit of that extra money if we can or we'll do it on the existing dollars you you have now and teach you how to get out of debt so what's the cost uh, to mark and joyce not to do this program well the cost of them not doing this program is 1.1 million dollars which is exactly why they did this program the other cost to them is one hundred seventeen thousand dollars worth of interest saved so the total cost not to do this not to do this total when you add those two together is 1.2 million dollars all right step four all right there's seven steps here so hang with me we'll be done before you know it and hold your questions please uh step four taxes the less you pay the more you keep think about that the less you pay the more you keep but do you do you even know where taxes are going to go are they going to be lower do you think they're going to be higher do you think they're going to stay the same i mean i don't know but i will tell you this uh, given our current debt situation in America, I can't see how the tax rates could stay low because the only way to pay the debt down is to tax the people. Um, so I got a business proposal for you, all right? And this is, this is kind of interesting, but just stick with me here. I have a business proposal for you. You front all the money, you take all the risk, you manage the business on a day-to-day -day business, and in 30 years from now, I'll tell you how much you owe me. The reason why I find that interesting is because that is exactly what most people are doing today with their retirement planning. So the question is, would you want to go in business with me? Probably not. 
well, then why are we doing it with our retirement plan when we have so much debt? And whether you have a lot of debt or you have no debt, this program works for everybody. Um, let's look at the tax advantage in, in, in an IRA. You know, we've been told for years and years that we need to put our money away in an IRA. And, and that by doing so, we don't have to pay taxes on that. So the rule of 72 says that every, uh, every time seven years goes by, basically, if I get 10% of my money, my money will double. So basically, if I put away $5,000, when I turn 66, it, the rule of 72 says that I will end up with $40,000. Well, let me tell you something. If that's in an IRA, that 40000 is in an IRA, and I haven't paid taxes on it, if I would have paid 20% in taxes in the beginning when I had 5000 I would have paid $1,000 worth of taxes. But because I waited until I was 66, I put off paying $1,000, turn around and pay $8,000 in taxes. So there's no tax savings in an IRA. We've been sold a bill of goods, folks. Think about it. If you put your money away in a qualified account, the 5000 becomes forty. You could have pulled it out and paid, paid the taxes on that, all right? At 20%, think about that, okay? And then because you're no longer being taxed on that money and you're growing in a tax-favored environment, you, you, why would anybody offset $1,000 to pay eight? It doesn't make any sense. But people do it, okay? So I use that example all the time and I also use this one. If we took the same $10,000 investment and we put it away for 28 years, and we got a 7% interest rate and we were in a 25% tax bracket. If we took that right now and, and, and was taxed on that money at the end of 28 years, we'd have 41.9 left. If we put the taxes off and they were just tax deferred, we'd have 49,866. But if we had a tax-free investment, it would be 66.5. Do you want 66.5 or do you want 41.9, okay? That's the difference in taxes. So if we think taxes are gonna be higher, the question you have to ask is, is postponing taxes really a good idea? And when should you start tax planning? My answer to that is, is now. It's, it's now because we don't know what the future is gonna hold. And if we got debt beyond that, uh, it makes perfect sense. So step number five, risk. There are a lot of risks in our lifetime. And whenever those risks kick in, it could dramatically affect our retirement. So what are the potential risks when it comes to our life? Well, taxes are a risk. We don't know if they're gonna go up, down, or sideways. We don't know if there's gonna be new ones. Market, there's market risk. We don't know if somebody's gonna to decide to, to blow up a building and destroy the stock market. What about emergencies? Things happen, they come up, and what do we do? A lot of times we reach towards those retirement assets. What about a disability and the fact that maybe something happens to me and I can't work anymore? What about a lawsuit? You know, small business owners and people in general a lot of times can end up in lawsuits to deplete assets. Fraud, unfortunately in, the, in, in this world there are a lot of financial fraud victims. And then of course death is a risk. And so what is your greatest asset? Well, let's think about that. The ability to generate income is your greatest asset. So you need to protect your greatest asset, period. All right, step number six. We're almost done here, the big picture. You gotta know where you're going and how to get there, all right? First thing you gotta do when we're talking about the debt, debt, seven steps of debt management is we gotta maximize our money. We gotta maximize it. We gotta reduce the debt, we gotta maximize it, and then we gotta have it accumulate. That accumulation phase is very, very important because at some point in time, we're gonna have a distribution phase. And once we get to the distribution, if we didn't accumulate wealth properly, we just distribute a lot less to us, and in some cases, None. I mean, think about the $2 million and getting the retirement at 65 with $60,000. We didn't maximize the money we earned while we were alive, and it certainly didn't accumulate, uh, or while we were working, it certainly didn't accumulate like it should have. And therefore, in the distribution phase, that could be financial ruin. So what are some of the benefits of the big picture plan? Now, the big picture plan is the plan that I will provide for you, and all you have to do is submit the information we need that's relative to debt and income. And I can put together the big picture plan like we did for Mark and Joyce. And the benefits of that are going to be to argue less about money. We're going to find wasted money. We're going to improve cash flow. We're going to dramatically increase your savings. No doubt about it. We're going to help you get out of debt faster than you ever, ever thought possible. And this is math, folks. Math. We're going to learn how to prioritize your accounts. 
and show you why you need to prioritize them the way you are. And then ultimately, we're going to look at retiring with a tax favored income. Mark and Joyce before, 29 and a half years of debt, $179,000 debt balance, $195,000 in interest paid, and $374,000 in real debt. What did we accomplish for them? We freed them for, from lenders in 7.9 years. We've saved them an interest of $117,000. We freed up $21.77 a month for retirement. And savings in 25 years is over a million dollars because of this. Now, most people will say too, you know what, that looks like a great plan, but chances are I'm gonna have to buy another house later. I'm gonna have to buy another car later. That's fine. But let me, let me just tell you this. If you get out of debt in 7.9 years and you free up $21.77 a month, could you not use that money that you're stockpiling to buy the things that you need and then pay yourself back with interest? So now you're paying the interest back towards yourself, which is ultimately going into your tax favored retirement plan? Absolutely you can. So let's review about this. So knowledge, step one is knowledge. I'm giving you some knowledge here, all right? And I'm giving you that knowledge to help you improve your cash flow, reduce your debt, reduce your taxes, minimize your risk, and provide a big picture report for you so that we can do the math and simply give you the information so that you can make an educated decision. Now, most people that see this immediately like uh, and want to make a decision to be like Mark and Joyce. And, and my question to you is, would that include you? You've got to make a decision. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. That's Mark Twain. You've got to make a decision. So here's what I'm offering to you. We educate people. We don't sell anybody anything. I'm willing to give you this get out of debt report and or big picture plan so you can see where you're at versus where you could be. And assuming that where you could be is a lot better, sort of like Mark and Joyce's plan, I'm going to give that to you and show you how to accomplish it. And by doing the, all of that, we're not going to charge you for any of that. I can put that together. You can fill out the data sheet that's attached to this webinar right here and either fax it or mail it to me or, or email it, or you can simply fill out the online version and get it to me. And what we'll do is I'll, I'll call you and I'll say, hey, look, I'm going through this stuff and I have a few questions. I'll get those questions answered. Then I'll take that and I'll stick it into our software and I will generate a big picture plan that I would then get back to you. I can email it to you. We can do a Zoom meeting uh, in front of a computer where I can show you how it can work for you and how we can get you out of debt and then put you on a plan to success. And let me tell you, I've been doing this for a long time. And one of the things I love most about this, not only do we not charge for this because of the way the system is, is set up to help people, but it's the results that we get. When I sit in my office and I watch a husband and a wife look at each other with hope, with a plan, you know, look at each other like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we didn't know this. We're, we're now going to be out of debt. I thought we had 28 years worth of debt. Really? We can get this done in six, you know? And then they say, well, wait a minute, we've got an eight year old. Do you realize that when we get out of debt, our eight year old will be 14 and we'll have time to plan for college because we've freed up money. I mean, there's so many uses to this. I just can't even begin to tell you, but what I can tell you is that if you don't take the step, you'll never know whether or not the plan could work for you. And the reason why I talk about knowledge is power is because I find that a lot of people see good systems, good programs, good things that can help them, and they talk themselves out of taking the opportunity just to find out. So I'll end this with letting you know that you can submit that information to me. And again, there's no cost for that. There's no expectation for that. We're simply going to show you what it can do for you and give you the peace of mind to see whether or not you can be like Mark and Joyce. So thank you for your time today. And uh, let me go to a couple questions here. Okay. All right. Do you have to have a bunch of money up front to get started? No, you don't. Matter of fact, we can show you how to redirect money. And depending on how we redirect it, it just depends on how long it takes it, uh, to get out of debt. Do I have an opportunity to put the $10,000 in my savings account into this structure to kickstart it? Absolutely, you do. Absolutely, you do. Matter of fact, if you've got some debt assets out there that aren't doing anything for you, uh, we can show you how to restructure those in order to capitalize your get out of debt opportunity. Could I use this strategy with my business? Yes, sir. Matter of fact, this is one of the best strategies you could use for a business because once you get a business out of debt and free up the cash flow, 
then you can go into expansion mode. Not to mention if you don't currently have a retirement plan, like a lot of small business owners, um, you could use utilize this debt structure for your business to create a retirement plan. How long does it take to get the report back? Well, if you get me the information once I call you, because I usually have some questions, I can get it back and turned around to you in 48 hours. Do you have to come into the office? No, you do not have to come into the office. We can do everything online and show you exactly uh, how this could work for you. Do you work with old 401ks and IRAs? Yes, we do. We, we absolutely do all those things um, and we put them to better use for you, specifically if you have a debt situation. So, all right, well, that looks like quite a bit of questions. I'll tell you what I'll do. There's, there's a bunch more popping up. Why don't I just respond to those uh, on the screen? or uh, send you the email or whatever based on your registration. That's what I'll do. I'll just connect it to the registration email that you supplied to, excuse me, to watch this webinar. I hope each and every one of you are having a great day. And uh, if you know anybody that could utilize this information, by all means, pass on to them the opportunity to watch a webinar in the future. Thank you very much.